bad children. Come and get your lollipops. This is the child catcher. A character from the 1968 movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and who's lived on in infamy in the minds of children for decades. <laughs> because if you remember this guy, I'm pretty sure you can remember nightmares of him. 80 or 90 percent of conversations I've started with anybody about the film start with the phrase, I was so scared of that child catcher. I had nightmares about that child catcher. So I decided I'd rewatch this movie since I hadn't seen it for at least 15 years. And I'm being abducted. my God, it is so much more wild than I could have possibly remembered. <laughs> I remember I owned a Hot Wheels Chitty Chitty Bang Bang car, or at least some off-brand version of a Hot Wheels type of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang car. And while finding a picture of that, I found this incredible action figure of the child catcher. It was, we're, we're talking about this guy today. This movie is wild. Lollipops. But before we jump into Chris Hansen's Most Wanted, I want to talk about what's already going on in the movie before he shows up. So we follow the story of Caractacus Potts, who's played by Dick Van Dyke. He's a struggling inventor who, when he's not inventing a malfunctioning saw trap, he could be naming a candy a toot sweet. Toot sweet. Or he could be cooking fried eggs and sausage over china plates instead of a frying pan like a madman and then send those burning murder discs flying at his family. He's got two kids, Jemima and Jeremy, and living with uh, his dad, who they just call grandpa. Speaking of those two kids, though, the first line spoken to them in the movie is this. It's a racing car, and we're winning, and you're in the way. And you're in the way for a right belt round the ear, old young man, if I have any more of your lip. The guy then says, I'm going to scrap this car. I'm going to tear it apart. I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to piss on its grave and there's nothing you can do about it kids and so jeremy's like if you put her in the fiery furnace you'll be guilty of murder yeah and if you don't get out of it i'll be guilty of two more murders now go on out of it now i just want to say we're only 10 minutes into the movie and we've already threatened to murder kids so we're, we're looking pretty strong here so anyway about halfway through the movie caractacus gets enough money to buy the car for his kids and fixes it up for them go he calls it Chitty Chitty Bang Bang because the engine farts and chits at him. Chitty bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang. Someone please help me. This song has been stuck in my head for five days straight. What's weird is everything in this movie is based pretty much in reality until about halfway through when Caractacus begins to tell a fictional story to his kids and then things just kind of go off the rails with a car boat chase, a whole bunch of wily coyote skits. Uh, Finally, an evil baron kidnaps their grandpa, Captain Price, by flying him over the ocean in an outhouse while they chase them in their flying car. Chitty chitty bang bang. All right, we all on the same page of insanity? Good, because we're just getting to the good part. Because the family arrives in the strange land of Bulgaria. Because, you know, it's a vulgar place. They even called their Zeppelin service Volg Air, which is... Awesome. They're met with cannon fire when they reach their castle and they run away and they send the guard after them. And then the Baroness decides to yell out this uh, bone chilling cry of doom. And call out the child catcher! <laughs> This guy just Tokyo drifts his way out in a prison wagon. I gotta say, there's not many more sights more intimidating than that. After he just announced you as the child catcher. <laughs> I mean, my God. Anyway, the family escapes uh, to a nearby town, lands there. And this is where the movie starts to get pretty eerie. They pass a donkey man and they're like, hey, what's up? And he's like, freaking weirdos. As soon as the family shows themselves, uh, the town goes dead silent and everyone just stares at them still. No one moves, no one speaks. They just stare them down and refuse to answer any of their questions. They slowly start to realize that they're staring at the kids and that there's not any children among them in the town. The only thing that breaks the tension is the soldier's horn blaring in the distance. And when it blares, everybody starts to freak out. These poor birds get thrown on the ground and uh, they start to board up their windows. Everybody locks themselves away and it leaves the family stranded and alone on the street. Until some guy pokes his head out his door and is like, what are you doing? Get inside, you stupid dumb idiots. No, shut up, on? shut up, get inside. Get it, huh? I don't give a crap, Why get in. We... Jemima has no care in the world and none of this is weird to her and she's already riding a rocking horse, which the guy is having none of. He is reasonably annoyed and telling him to shut up, get in the basement. The soldiers are coming to steal your children. And then he reveals that it's against the law for anyone to have children in Bulgaria. So as soon as they hide, soldiers arrive in the town and begin raiding houses one by one, looking for the kids. Then arrives the man, the myth, and the wanted for the disappearance of hundreds of children uh, along with the first time we hear this upbeat musical motif. Get up! Get up! 
which is such a juxtaposition to his nature that it somehow just makes it way more creepy. <laughs> then we hear his first lines. All right, a few things I want to point out. One is the hook he grabs from the wagon. That is so hardcore, I, I don't even know what to say about it. The second is his child catching net. Note that he has incorporated putting in uh, wooden hoop supports through the net uh, just to make sure that it doesn't break when there's a, a child in it. Oh my God, it's wild. <laughs> you already know that he's done this plenty and because he can smell children and pinpoint them with his incredible nose. One sniff and you're done for. You cannot hide from the child catcher. And because of that nose, they know exactly which house they're hiding in instantly. And he begins telling him to break the door down. And the toy maker's like, I'm coming, I'm coming. And they break a window before he can even open the door. <laughs> and then we get this epic entrance. <laughs> Seeing this again made it so easy for me to remember why I found this so terrifying. He tosses the place and we get some more info. If there are children here, my friend, you will die. Die. <laughs> so yeah, the stakes are laid out plain and they are intense. If the threat of just keeping a kid is death, then you can only imagine what they plan to do with the kids once they find them. So we continue on with the intro to Inglorious Bastards while um, Hans Landa finds a trap door almost instantaneously where he knows the children are probably hiding. And then he decides to drop this insane line. The Baroness will have your teeth for a necklace and your eyeballs for earrings. Which just... <laughs> it's crazy. I don't even know how you process that. Nobody done his her. Fool! Idiot! Out of my way! This guy searched for like three seconds total and was like, yeah, that's it. This guy probably doesn't even want to be a child catcher, so props to him. But if he was actually trying, then he definitely deserved his fool, fool idiot, idiot. <laughs> You have to know where to look. Like cockroaches. They get under the floors. In the cracks in the walls. Yep. Big Hans Landa energy going on here. They get out of this situation by pretending to be toys, which somehow works, and then they get disrupted by the soldiers yelling that they found Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, so they call off the search for now, and then they leave. The toy maker and Dick Van Dyke leave to go rescue Grandpa in the car, leaving this lady I haven't talked about much, uh, whose name is literally Truly Scrumptious, and the kids in the basement. And then, for some reason, she makes the galaxy brain decision to leave the kids alone in the land hunting children because it's been 30 minutes and she's a little bit hungry, so she goes to find some food. They promise to stay hidden but we all know that's not going to happen. Now, before we get back to the child catcher's second attempt, we cut to the Baron trying to figure out how to make the car fly, and when his wife wants to come along, he says, Every time I want to have a little fun, she turns up. There's definitely a few wrinkles on this, on this movie. <laughs> if women are going to drive motor cars around, they should learn to operate one correctly. Women. But while Grandpa is trying to make the car fly, he accidentally 007 ejects her from the car a few hundred feet into the air. Which, fun fact, uh, the same studio that made the original Casino Royale just finished making that movie and started working on this one uh, within a year of each other. So I think it kind of makes sense if you seen anything from the original Casino Royale. <laughs> oh, you like that sort of thing, eh? If you'd never seen this movie, I would bet my life savings and hell, even my life, that you would never guess what this guy does next. Don't worry, little bitch, I get you down. I've been waiting for this for 20 years. And he blasts a shotgun at her until she falls a few stories into a nearby lake. He runs over and he's like, are you all right? And she's like, uh, yeah, I'm good. I don't know how I'm alive after you shot a shotgun shell at me and I fell like three stories. Good! Yeah, right. okay. Never mind. I can tell them next time. I don't know if they dropped a dummy for this scene uh, or if that was an actual stuntman falling from that height, but if it was a stuntman, then props to them because that's insane. All I do know is that safety was probably not the highest priority in this movie because earlier there was a dog that fell off of a railing during a musical number. It was a complete accident and it's just there in the movie, which is wild. <laughs> But you can see the wind of the helicopter blowing on the water, so it's entirely possible this is just a stuntman, which is crazy. But anyway, while that's all going on, we cut back to the child catcher's second and most infamous scene. This music theme makes me laugh, I think, every time I hear it, but it also just works so well. It almost feels like the music itself is his own camouflage. Come along, my little one. 
And if anything, this scene was one of the best lessons in Stranger Danger for kids ever because he slowly lures them and at first the sister's like, Jeremy, you mustn't. Yeah, no dip, Sherlock. This is the same guy that was hunting you earlier. Let's just, let's just forget his face. But little idiot Jeremy's just, he just wants that ice cream. And all free today. Cream puffs. Treacle tarts. This shot right here is so ominous. It, it just sends shivers down your spine. Look at that. It's so imposing. <laughs> but nah, look at little Jeremy's dumb smile. Treacle tarts and ice cream. And their hook, line, and sinker with that. Freaking treacle tarts, man. I must be deprived in my life because <laughs> I've never had one. So <laughs> they must be pretty freaking good to want to run out into that. And Jemima objects one more time saying, but truly told us to stay still. And he's like, well, shut up. I don't care a crap. There's ice cream and treacle tarts outside. And they run outside. Uh, and so a neighbor pokes their head out. And is like, no, God, don't do it, you morons. And they just keep running. Um, they even get a second warning from this dude. It's, it's just so scary. They just run to their dooms, ignoring warnings, and the child catcher finally hears them and just smiles to himself knowing he's won. Now, this is probably easily the most memorable scene in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and for good reason. It is terrifying. I might <laughs> It is so nuts. Uh, just how fast the tone changes to the incoherent screaming while the wagon reveals itself in one second and the facade just falls apart. Uh, it's a marvel of practical effects first off, but uh, the rushing away accompanied by the music while he laughs and they scream as he whips the horse onward will just never not be terrifying. While I was looking up stuff about this, I found an interview of the actress who played Jemima years later and what she remembered about that scene. The bit that scared me most was when the, the ice cream stuff all falls off the cage and he cracks the whip and it takes off. You, you'll notice in the film the wheels actually do come off the ground. He... I'm just going to pause for a second. This is the craziest image I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> uh, pure terror. He was a bit away with it there. They didn't have to put any glycerine in our eyes, and those were real screams of terror that that was frightening. This movie was cool though. I, I thought it was super fun. It's a classic, you can't argue it. As for the man behind the child catcher, Robert Heltman, the man who played the child catcher, was an incredible person from everything I've learned. He was an accomplished ballet star and choreographer, and from what I know, he lived an incredible life. In every uh, interview I've looked up about this movie, everybody says that he was like the kindest, sweetest man anyone knew. So let that be a comfort to you if you ever have nightmares of the child catcher or did have nightmares of the child catcher, that the man behind him was a wonderful person. Remember how I was saying that this movie didn't care so much about safety? Well, Robert Heltman almost died while filming this movie. One day he was uh, practicing riding the stagecoach and this happened. He was coming down the street, whipping those horses, and as it went around the corner, it flipped over. As it went over, he stepped on the side, stepped on the wheel, and stepped off on the curbing. Never seen anything as graceful in my life. So yeah, super cool and talented guy. I guess if there's anything to really get out of this story, it's that uh, don't accept the treacle tarts at face value if anybody offers you them because there could be a hook hiding behind those treacle tarts and you don't want to see what that thing is going to do to you. I definitely don't. The lollipops aren't worth it. Mm -hmm.